Donna J. Donnan presents Ask Donna, a weekly podcast on a plethora of topics and tips. Donna's podcast is split into four distinct sub-podcasts. The first week of the month is where Donna hosts her Ask the Bloggers podcast on such topics as overcoming bullies and bullying, tips on entrepreneurship, and protecting oneself from scams and scammers. The second week of the month is where Donna hosts her Ask the Coach podcast. A bit of this, a bit of that from her monthly Did You Know Diary. The third week of the month is where Donna hosts her Ask the Homemaker podcast. Tips on everyday hints to help you take advantage of natural remedies and solutions. And the fourth week of the month is where Donna's podcast is all about her product review and a book review. Sit back and enjoy. Hello everybody and greetings from me, Donna J. Johnham. I am the host of the Ask Donna Show, and we are here at the end of September, believe it or not. Week four. Yes, indeed, week four. And I hope that everyone has had a good September. I like to call September or describe September as sweet, but the crossover month for September. This is where summer hands over the baton to fall. We may not always like it, but we don't have a choice about it. We can have an Indian type summer of nice days, warmth, sunshine, and still the ability to go out there and enjoy the outdoors. Or we can have some uh, fall days, the beginning of fall. Um, Sometimes it's a bit cold, But one never knows, and September is always a month that brings us unexpected weather. Can't always predict the weather, okay? So, I again like to thank everybody for continuing to listen in uh, to my shows. And I'd like to thank Victor Guvia. And I'd like to thank all those who continue to send me their feedback, their comments, their thoughts, and their suggestions. To ask Donna on blindlife at gmail.com. Again, I thank everybody. And before we get down to the business of this week, this being Ask the Reviewer, I just want to have a summary of last week, okay? Um, I just want to summarize that week one we had Ask the Blogger, week two Ask the Coach, and week three, which was last week, we had Ask the Homemaker. In last week's show, or on last week's show, um, I gave you 13 safety tips for freezing food. I talked about how you could store food in your freezer, how you could defrost your food, you know, making sure that your meat, your poultry, your fish and your seafood are placed on the bottom shelf of your fridge. Best to place it in a plate when defrosting it. Um, I also told you that you should be careful when defrosting it because if you want to have a quick defrost, don't put it in the microwave. Put it in a sealed bag in a bowl of cold water and let it go for at room temperature. I gave you 13 tips and I hope that these tips were very helpful for you. Right, there are more tips than what I just discussed here, but um, that's it. All right. And for my mental stretch, for last week, I used or focused on the sense of taste, okay? And I gave you some suggestions. And I told you about the MIC principle, which clears the mind and the imagination of cobwebs and clutter. Doing a recharge, a refresh, a regurgitation, a reformat, a renew, anything like that and sparking and stimulating their creative juices, okay? Um, My virtual bento basket for this week concentrated on some fall favorites, okay? 
So that was it for uh, my uh, show for last week. And I hope that these tips continue to help you out. Okay? Now for the business of the fourth week. Okay. And for this week, we are going to be asking the reviewer. And we'll start with a product review. Have you ever heard of the Boil Alert Pot Watcher? This is a very nifty little product that I discovered a year ago. It's a little disc. I think it's made out of fiberglass. It's a nice way to monitor your pot when boiling water or anything else. It could be rice or pasta. Place the disc in the pot and when the, the water or the contents of your pot starts to boil, this little disc will start to rattle against the side of the pot. The sound is loud, clear and strong. And like I said, it is a small round disc, okay? Yeah, so that's what it is. And I suggest that, you know, it belongs in anybody's kitchen. It has its place there. It's sort of a safety mechanism for anyone who's not sure as to whether their, the contents of their pot is boiling, okay? It's used, it gives you another backup alternative and it uses the sense of sound for you, okay? Now on to the book review. It's The Eagle Has Landed by Jack Higgins. And what you will notice about my book reviews is that I love to go back to those old time authors, those sweet old time authors, because I think we need to pay more homage to them and to recognize, you know, the books that they have written. I certainly am a lover of Jack Higgins. He's one of my favorite authors. I remember nights when I would, you know, stay up reading his books. I used to listen to them on audio couldn't get to sleep, we listened to them, and um, sometimes it would take me to three or four in the morning, and then I realized, oh shoot, I gotta go to work. <laughs> uh, for this week, it's The Eagle Has Landed by Jack Higgins. It was a very popular book way back when. Okay. Jack Higgins is a British novelist who passed on in 2022. But his real name was Harry Patterson. He wrote under the name of Jack Higgins. Harry Patterson was his real name. And here's a bit of the plot. The book makes use of the false document technique. It is all about 13 German paratroopers in an English gra graveyard. Think of it. Um, they are in an English graveyard, 13 of them. They're discussing the rescue of one of Hitler's um, allies, Benito Mussolini. And it is set in September 1943, after Mussolini was deposed in Italy. And it's all about how he achieved his release and escape from Italy. Okay. And what is most unique about this book is that Hitler discuss the same type of mechanism with his cohort Himmler. So Adolf Hitler discusses with Adolf Himmler as how to kidnap the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. 
Okay. And uh, Admiral Wilhelm Canaris is asked to make a feasibility study on how this could be done, if it could be done, when it could be done. They would capture Churchill and take him to the Reich. And he, Canaris realizes that although Hitler would probably forget this whole nonsense, Himmler would not. Um, the study is undertaken, but it is a waste of effort. And there is a lot of subterfuge, a lot of um, spies in the whole process. And the spy provides a very vital piece of information. Now, it's about Churchill, you know, who is supposed to spend a relaxing weekend somewhere in Britain. And here is where the potential kidnapping would take place. Now, I know that a lot of us don't really appreciate World War II novels and stuff, but I really liked this um, novel. I listened to it maybe twice. And on a fall day, it may not be a very, um, it may not be a very bad idea to listen to it. it you know, think of it as, as just simply fiction. It didn't happen. So think of it as fiction, and it might give you an idea to write your own novel. <laughs> All right. <coughs> we are now going to move on to our mental stretch for this week. Okay? So, we're going to leave this book review behind. And... We are going to go on to our mental stretch, okay? All right. And I'm looking for our mental stretch. Where is our... For this week, our mental stretch is going to uh, focus on the sense of touch, okay? Sense of touch. And what I keep saying is that for the mental stretch, we have to, we need to use um, one of our senses as a basis to concentrate on our mental stretch. And as I keep saying, the mental stretch is all about using the MIC principle, M-I-C, using your mind, the imagination, and the creative juices. You're going to clear your mind and imagination of cobwebs and creative juices, and you're going to spark and stimulate your creative juices. Sorry, you're going to clear, sorry, you're going to clear your mind and imagination of cobwebs and clutter, and you're going to spark and stimulate your creative juices. Your mental stretch is something you can use anywhere, anytime, any length of time, any time of the day. And you can use it in times of anxiety, in times of depression, in times of, you know, when you're all stressed out, in times of when you are looking for ways to reorganize yourself, reformat yourself. And what I'm saying is that my mental stretch, which I've been using for years, and my friends and associates are also using it, you can use your mental stretch to really, really help you. Because think of it, you have stretches for different parts of the body, so why not the mental stretch, okay? And if you want to know more about the mental stretch, I started a show, I think I started it back, might have been in April or May, I have to go and look now. It's been running once monthly, 
It's your mental stretch with Donna. And uh, you can check it out, see what happens there. But it goes into much more detail as to how you can use the mental stretch. All right? For this week, we're going to use a sense of touch. Think of it. You're touching. Put your hands around a bowl of warm chicken corn soup. Touch it. Smell it and taste it. Touch, smell, and taste. Warm chicken corn soup. But because we're using the sense of touch this week, we're going to put our hands around this bowl of warm chicken corn soup. See how this titillates your mind and your imagination. Tickles it, okay? Touch a hot potato. Now, I'm not asking you to go out there and burn yourself, but gently place your hands around a hot, uncut potato. This would send some really interesting sensations up your body, right? From your toes to your head. Think of it. Think of it. And how about this? something less harmful that you might think of, a pair of new jeans. Just bought a pair of new jeans for the fall. Touch the pair of jeans. Run your hands down its length. Smell with the, you know, the, the fragrance of a pair of new jeans. Touch it. Smell it. Even look at it. Visualize it. A pair of pale blue jeans, a pair of black jeans, a pair of, you know, fawn colored jeans. Think of it. Okay? Those are my suggestions for your mental stretch for this week. Alright? And I'm going to end this show with my virtual bento basket. How about a Canadian pre-Thanksgiving basket? Thanks, the Canadian Thanksgiving is not too far away in early October. So think of it like this. What are you going to put in this Thanksgiving basket? Maybe let's prepare a pre-Thanksgiving meal. Turkey, mashed potatoes, vegetables, and then you'll have an apple pie or a pumpkin pie, bottle of apple cider, bottle of apple juice, bottle of sparkling wine, either or any of those would do the trick. Oh, how about some cornbread to go along with your Thanksgiving meal? <coughs> Prepare this meal and you can offer it to your friends, your family, or even a less fortunate family, you can offer this to. Okay? Right then, <clears throat> just want to end the show now with my special announcement. For $5 per month, you can share info on yourself, about someone else, about anything. No more than 150 words. Send your email to us at askdonna on blindlife at gmail.com and if you send us an email that is not critical of anyone or an email that is not does not contain foul language we will be pleased to review and if your submission is accepted what we will do is we will let you know acknowledge your submission Invite you to make payment to us at PayPal, P A Y P A L, at DonnaJohnHen.com. When we receive your payment, we will then um, make your announcements on our shows. Let us know which two shows you wish, you wish to have your announcement made, either on two Ask Donna shows or to Dining with Donna shows, or one of each, one 
either an Ask Donna show or Dining with Donna show. If you want to learn more, please send us an email to askdonna on blindlife at gmail.com. Right then, folks, this is the final week of September for me. I hope you've enjoyed my show for today. Sorry for any hesitances or anything like that. And I apologize for that. Uh, Have a great rest of the day, a great rest of the week, and a great rest of September. See you in October. Bye for now. That's it for this week. Donna hopes that you enjoyed her podcast today. She thanks you for having taken the time to tune in and looks forward to being with you next week. Send your thoughts and feedback to Donna at AskDonna on MindLife at gmail.com.